There are a couple of very interesting pieces of information that have been released today, mostly regarding the SEC. You guys have most likely already seen this article today, but it is mind-bogglingly funny, specifically if you've been following the Ripple XRP versus SEC lawsuit for a little while. So again, this video is going to be primarily for people who have updated themselves about the XRP situation, who are a little bit aware of these strange tactics the SEC has been using for the last couple of months, and that will make this video a whole lot funnier. If you guys are excited about that, though, make sure you press that like button, and let's read on. So, the SEC officially decries delay tactics used by some defense lawyers. Gabriel Grewal, director of the agency's enforcement division, called out what he described as gamesmanship by some corporate lawyers. A senior U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission official called on lawyers to make more cooperatively or work more cooperatively with the agency, saying regulators have seen recent incidents in which the Defense Council for Public Companies had used delay tactics to stimmy investigations. <laughs> Sorry, but am I really reading this? Really? I mean... It's hypocritical for one thing, and then I'm like... <laughs> Very funny. Take a look at this. Too often, we see defense counsel, sometimes even including SEC Enforcement Division alums, um, engage in conduct that seems to have little purpose other than to delay our investigations. Mr. Graywell said Thursday at the SEF West, or I guess Securities Enforcement Forum West 2022, which was held in East Palo Alto, California. Delay tactics are new, Mr. Grewal conceded. He noted that one of his predecessors, Robert Kuzami, voiced similar concerns in a speech in 2011, saying defense lawyers would sometimes deliver a surreptitious kick under the table to a witness's shins during testimony to get them to answer questions in a certain way. Lawyers today have moved on to more subtle behavior, Mr. Grewal said. Again, it gets more funny. One of Mr. Grewal's top complaints concerns document requests that the SEC imposes on public companies under its supervision. Mr. Grewal said he had recently learned about an entity with billions of dollars in assets that had uh, that perused a mere 200 documents in a six-month period after being served with a request for customer account and trading data. All right, I can hopefully take this on again. Whew, had to take a little 15 minute mental break just to kind of calm down from all this ridiculousness because for all of you that do not understand, the last couple of months, I would say even years already now, because it's been like, oh, it's been a long time. We've been talking about how the SEC really is not cooperating properly and how they are delaying all this stuff for not really any purpose and are trying to hold back the documents as much as possible, which is again, I would say fine, a lawsuit is a battle, but not when the judge has already made a decision. You're still trying to fight it to the depths of the depths. When once more, guys, I would not be saying this if this was one party versus another. They're both acting out of their own personal interest. No, please. I'm not against lawsuits as a whole concept in the sense that you always want to defend yourself. No, no, no. Not what I'm saying. I'm saying the SEC is a public entity, basically, that's supposed to work and provide for the best of the U.S. investors to protect them in the best way, shape, or form possible. When people, even in the lawsuit, regardless of where it is, are asking, hey, what regulations have you already put out there to the public? That, I think, is a core question that should be answered without any hesitation. If they're saying, hey, was this speech an opinion or a public piece of like a, like a, a regulation, they should be easily able to identify that. Were all these emails meant to like help base that opinion or what exactly happened over there? They should be easily ready to give that up. The fact they're trying so hard to kind of keep things back, and again, it's, it's been over a year since Ripple basically uh, had, uh, again, sort of some, some smaller pieces of approval or so, but the SC just kept delaying every single part in all of this, and it really so slow to produce stuff. Ripple had to come up a couple of times to ask for that. I think this is really funny that this is coming from the SEC side. But wait, all right, I, I have some soup here because I was like <laughs> slipping it all up right here, just taking this all in, you know? I want to take in my vitamins properly. So read this. In some instances, lawyers are representing companies and individuals in cases where they have a <laughs> conflict of interest. <laughs> oh, and some lawyers are asserting legal privilege to shoot documents from the eyes of the SEC staff <laughs> in cases where that privilege doesn't apply. <gasps> Oh my days, this is this is too funny. Lawyers who do, do cooperate in a genuine way with the SEC are better positioned to win credit for their clients. <laughs> Sorry. 
You can't take this seriously. They really are doing this to us, guys. They really are. Maybe. Wait, wait, give it a. Is, is it April Fool's joke? No, it's May 16th. It's not an April Fool's joke. Really? Is this really what they've written? So this is by far going to be. It's on the Wall Street Journal. This has got to be one of the funniest posts of 2022. By far number one for me, just as of this point. This is the most. This is ridiculous. But it doesn't end there, all right? So there's one thing I have to show you guys. Gary Gensler, a couple of hours ago on Twitter, put this. When you make decisions with other people's money, there are going to be conflicts of interest. Left unchecked, these conflicts might affect the quality of the advice that you receive. And in turn, the financial futures you have worked so hard to build. <laughs> Sorry. And then John T. It's coming in to say, I literally can't believe you are tweeting about conflicts of interest. What in the world is happening today, guys? What is this? Oh, sleep on. Oh, you guys can't read that. What in the world is happening here? So yeah, at first I had a completely different story to tell you guys today, all right? Because there's so much news that came out. I have so many different pieces to talk about, but... Then I started reading a little bit about this SEC stuff, and I'm just mind boggled. Like, uh, it's really funny. I have one video I might show it to you guys a little bit later, um, where Mike Novogratz, for example, says I was not really been happy with the XRP stuff. Community is kind of uneducated, and it's kind of funny how the Bank of England is also saying that retail investors don't understand crypto. But at the end, right here, um, give you guys a little sound warning. Make sure uh, I'm gonna open the clip. I'm not so sure how the sound is gonna be. So, three, two, one. Much quicker than that. So like this coin I was talking about, Terra, if you're in Korea and you're in a cab, you'll pay for things on the Chai payment system. Uh, or you'll go to the grocery store and you use Chai, like like you got you might use Apple Pay. Mm -hmm. You guys know Apple Pay? Yeah. Chai is Chai is Chai is a crypto payment system and that it's already six percent of payments in Korea. And so we're starting to jump out of the sandbox into the real world. And I think payments is going to be one of the first places. We see loud. Uh, I'll, I'll put it down. <laughs> Sorry for anybody with the. Uh, I'll put it down very much. Ah, uh, my, my, even my eardrums are getting destroyed right now. You know what? No sound, I guess. No sound for this one. They, they did me dirty on this one. It's just a little hyped up in Korea, you know. Uh, or I'm not even sure where he is. Uh, I actually don't know exactly where he's supposed to be. I already said Korea. So once more, I won't take it too far. But the, the first part of what he said is that the XP community is like a cult, sort of. They're too stupid to kind of look for than their feet. Like Trump supporters, they just accept anything. And they're just too core in all of it. Uh, here's that Chai payment system, by the way, over on Terra. But that's not what I wanted to show today. The only thing I wanted to show, guys, is that there's so many hypocrisies, so many fun parts about the SEC. I mean, we can sit here for hours and discuss how certain we can now be that at least something fishy is going on at the SEC's office and that either there's been some conflict of interest, period, they're just delaying things for absolutely no purpose or at least nobody can understand. They're changing up a lot of these uh, privileges for some reason people don't understand. Because remember, if it's a normal battle, I understand you're trying to put everything out of the corner to, to win your case, your, your, your part. However, if you are the offensive side basically again ripple being defense these guys being the i don't know how you call it in english like the uh, offensive side whatever then i'm thinking as well you gotta be in some way shape or form in this case as a government entity to be prepared to give some leeway to at the end of the day help out the investors whom you're trying to protect what they've done now is attack a company a private company not public um but in the in the end hurt investors you know, just normal u.s investors and everyone around the world a lot that's why there's sixty-five thousand signatures to kind of be like yo stop this um, and then they're, you know, hip, hip, hypocritical in every way. We don't understand exactly how. Uh, Digital Asset Investor also shared this. It was almost as if there was a group of SEC staff whose entire mission was to get Bitcoin and Ether a free pass, and then to make sure an action was filed against Ripple and then quit. Almost. Why? Well, there were a couple of these people who posted some uh, data about how, uh, at, what, so at what points these SEC officials left the SEC. But Wheezy said the same day the SEC announces the lawsuit against Ripple, they announced Dahlia Blast is leaving the SEC. Nothing is coincidence. So that's kind of funny. But of course, we also had Jay Clayton and all these people leave really soon after it was filed, which is really, really peculiar. And then I had one little just video. I don't think we even have to show it here. We don't actually have to watch it. Hi. Um, but Crypto Ari shared this and it was really beautiful to me. One thing people often forget is Ripple is being sued right now on XRP, right? And oh, it's a security thing. 
when in reality, the use of XRP and the XP Ledger is actually quite vast. Many people don't understand it can become a platformer in a way in which Ethereum has been for a long while. It can't really do everything the way Ethereum has done, nor does it need to because it's ridiculously cheap and ridiculously fast. But it does allow for some things like, for example, NFTs or so. A lot of people don't even know that. And there's a lot more possibilities. For example, on XRP, I personally find it that the Ledger feature is actually really an amazing one because of how simple it is. I'm not sure if I said Ledger. I meant to say escrow. I think I said Ledger. My bad. It's because I've read Ledger out loud, I think, from here. <laughs> But yeah, many people try to compare it with Ethereum, say, oh, Ethereum this, Ethereum that. If you really start thinking about it, Ethereum had a pre-sale, period. It's official. There's no denying that. The SEC just said they've grown out of it. But in reality, the XP ecosystem, the XP Ledger ecosystem has grown out a lot too. And there's a lot of possibilities. And I sometimes wonder why they're not acknowledging this or at least why they're trying to ignore it so hard. What is the purpose behind that? Why would they? Then again, guys, that is just my opinion on the matter. I personally am still expecting a pretty good result on my XRP holdings. Uh, and anybody asking me why I'm posting so many videos about Luna, it's the most trendy thing going on right now. I'm really liking to update myself. Even though I have almost no Luna, uh, I'm not necessarily happy for the entire crypto. I think many people are excited to hear about what's going on in that, which is why I'm providing as many updates as I possibly can, just keeping everybody in the loop. I also, as you guys have most likely found out, like the juicy, juicy crypto news and the, the underlying thoughts and whatnot. So when there's like a criminal investigation going on against a crypto project, so yeah, I definitely want to know what it's all about, right? A lot of the Ripple stuff that I like as well are the juicier pieces of news. Like, for example, this hypocrisy by the SEC that gets me hyped up. I, I In normal life, I don't necessarily like drama so much. I don't really care for it at all, actually. But in the crypto space, man, it hits me a little bit different because maybe it's because it's my money that it's playing with. Maybe that's why. I'm not too sure, but yeah. Wanted to quickly share this news. I think we've covered the most important parts right now. And uh, I, I got a lot of crypto news to cover throughout the day, guys. So make sure you stick around the channel. Make sure you subscribe for more of these crypto updates. And let me know down below what you think about this situation. Do you think the SEC is doing the right thing? <laughs> yes or no? Let me know down below, guys.